Anthony gave one of the best speech in the political conference in Budapest and I'm so happy I was able to interview him today. And in this interview, what you're going to learn is what motivates Anthony to learn multiple languages, what his daily routine is, and if you're busy, you got work, you got kids, you only have one hour to study a language in a day, he got you covered. Hi, Anthony. Thank you so much for taking your time to do this interview with us. Welcome, Brian. Okay, awesome. So, um, as I just told you, um, I just watched your um, Polygot Conference um, talk that you, you did in, in Budapest again, because I was there and I met you there. That's and right. it, was, it was really, really awesome. And, and for those of you who want to learn um, um, Anthony's approach, you can watch that video. However, is there, um, is, does, do you think that approach works for everybody? Um, I don't know, to be honest. I don't know what works for everybody. I only, I only know what works for me. Yeah. And my approach has always been to try things out. And if, firstly, they work, and secondly, I like them, then I stick with them. Because I don't want to do something I don't like, and I don't want to do something I, that doesn't work. Totally. So I just try out different techniques, find those that I enjoy and that work, and then stick with them. But I've tried many, many things and rejected them because they didn't work or I didn't like them. And I recommend that people do the same. I can't tell people what's right for them. Yeah. I can just offer them more options and that they can add to those they try. And if they like them and they work, then great. If they don't, move on to something else. Yeah, I think that's a really good point because you know, I've been interviewing many, I'm doing research on many different um, polyglots. And, and there are two, when you, when you mentioned one thing that's that if they if, if they work great and the same the second thing the most important thing is also if I like it because it can work beautiful really effective but I don't like it I can't there's no way I can continue to keep on doing it right sure you know um, I play guitar quite a lot and um, one of the guitar teachers says says all the time you have to differentiate between the time you're learning and the time you're playing he said, if you just spend all your time learning, you'll never truly appreciate the guitar. Uh -huh. If you spend all your time playing, you'll never advance in your guitar. Uh -huh. And I try to separate these two th things as well with languages. I l limit the amount of time I spend studying and learning. And then I view other time as playtime with the language, watching videos, talking to people, listening to audio, reading books, and so on. And I think balancing those two, the way I have done with the guitar, really helps me dramatically. And one of the biggest mistakes I had as a beginner, I think, was overemphasizing the learning part. I, see. I I think a lot of people suffer from this, of buying too many textbooks. Yeah. You know, you buy one textbook, read it, and you think, oh, I'm not getting very, very, very far, I'll buy another one. And yeah. then you buy another one, you buy another one, and they end up on the shelf, never used, and you feel guilty, and you think, I should be studying hard. But you never actually finish any of them, and you never allow yourself to enjoy the language, to Brilliant. play with the language. Brilliant. So what do you find most enjoying for you? Mmm. <laughs> okay. So um, what I like, actually, is using languages in real life. A lot of people say one of the things they like doing is having connections with people, having conversations. Yeah. But maybe it's, maybe I'm a weirdo. I don't particularly find that the most enjoyable thing. Yeah. Just sitting there to somebody on the bus and having a conversation, it's fine. But what I find most enjoyable is getting something done that I couldn't have done without the language. So ah. two good examples of this are um, the electricity company sent me a bill for a, a huge amount of money and a fine saying I had damaged my electric meter. Oh. This is here in Prague. And I phoned up and I spoke, they actually put it to their legal department because it was, get, it was such, such a large amount. And so they sent two engineers out and I was having to speak in check to these engineers about how electric meters work and how, how much I'd consumed and those kind of stuff. And it was quite advanced stuff, I think. And then I had to speak to their lawyer and explain they'd actually read, they'd actually replaced somebody else's meter and thought they'd replaced mine oh. and they'd misread the meter numbers and explaining this was I thought quite complicated stuff and I was really pleased that I was able to do it in Czech firstly because all the hard work paid off but secondly because it solved a real problem Wow! and without that real problem I wouldn't have felt the same satisfaction just from saying hello nice weather to somebody totally yeah. Wow. So another example is that I was in Paris recently 
And I decided I would only speak French for two weeks in Paris just to get a bit of exercise with yeah. it. And, you know, saying hello and so on to people was nice. But then I was in a restaurant with my wife and got speaking to the waiter. We said we were from Prague and he sent the owner of the restaurant to us. And we had this really good conversation because he'd just been to Prague with his wife. So we had a nice conversation in French about that. And then I started to talk to him about his restaurant. And he said, oh, yes, yes, blah, 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 blah. And eventually, he gave us this huge amount of food for free and oh. all these drinks. Wow. And, and we paid for some things, but we got all these extra courses and all these drinks and so on. And I thought that wouldn't have happened if I hadn't been speaking French to the guy. So it's, as I said, not so much just connecting with people, but achieving things that you couldn't achieve without the language that's nice. what i get the biggest buzz from because it merely makes me all the hard work paid off totally i'm getting goosebumps just listening to your stories ah and the reason i learned czech actually originally was um my wife i i worked in prague in an english-speaking environment and i nearly for a couple of years never really bothered with the language you can mm. survive very well here as you can in many countries yeah. in some kind of expat bubble yes but then i met my wife and after a couple of years we were madly in love and wanted to get married and so on. So I decided I would give my wedding speech in Czech. Yeah. And I wanted it to be humorous to keep the audience awake. Yes. <laughs> and also quite informative. So I got pretty in intensive into studying the language and I wrote this speech. And I did it all in secret, so nobody really knew I was doing it. Yeah. And then at the end, I w it was only a 15-minute speech, but I gave the whole speech in Czech. And my wife was crying and her parents were crying and everybody in the audience was laughing and so on. And I, again, that shows it's not just connecting with people. It's about making something happen. I wanted to see the emotional reactions of people at my wedding. And so yeah. having that specific goal there is yeah. a real motivator for me. Wow. That's... Yeah. That's amazing. So is, that, uh, is Czech your first language that you, that you um, try to learn by yourself? It's difficult to say because um, I, le I used to live in Luxembourg and in Luxembourg I learned to speak quite good French. I'm quite good in French now. Uh, well, I was, I was probably even better then, but I can speak French pretty well. And um, I learned Luxembourgish as well. Do you know Luxembourg has its own language? Lux, Lux, Luxembourgish, Luxembourgish, and it's sort of Luxembourgish, Luxembourgish, okay. Luxembourgish, yeah. And it's it's sort of German with French bits in it and so on. Okay. And um, I learned that so I could speak to shopkeepers and old people and so on, many of whom wouldn't actually speak English or much French at all. But I learned those more for practical reasons, just to you know to get by. Yeah. It was only when I um, came to Prague that I realized that having a specific goal and then real achievements from something is what really motivates me. Awesome. So it's only probably in the past five years that I've been really very serious about learning languages and now I've sort of spread it out to quite a few different languages. And um, having a specific goal there uh, to make things happen that you couldn't make happen otherwise is, mm. is very, very important to me. If you're just learning languages because you think it would be a neat idea, I don't think that's sufficient motivation. Yeah, not enough. The, you might start out with a lot of initial excitement, but it'll yeah. wear off over time. Totally. But, but when, you have, when you see things actually happening with the language that wouldn't have happened without the language, then... It's like a drug high almost, like a real buzz from it. Now, that that's very going. interesting. When you said you have a, a goal, like, you know, um, um, what I don't, I don't know exact word that you just said. You said something like um, um, achieving something, producing a result that you wouldn't have, right. wouldn't be so, able to do without speaking the language. Okay, so that is the goal. The that's, goal isn't something specific. And my goal in Czech, for example, wasn't to speak to the electricity company. Totally. My, you don't know that. You don't no, know when it's no, going to come up. My goal is to be able to have experiences in a language that I could not have without that language. Ah. So, for, you see what I mean? So, when That's I went to Paris, is. I wanted to be able to have experiences that would not be possible 
without the language. Do you did you move to Prague before um, for work beforehand, and then you met your wife, or you came to Prague yes. before your wife because of yeah, your wife? Yeah, so I, I actually was working in a consultancy company, and I lived in lots of different countries. I think twelve different countries for okay. various lengths of time, and. They'd sent me to Prague for a year, and at the end of the year, the company boss said, "Now you have to move to the new office in Baghdad." Ooh. I didn't want to live in Baghdad. I said <laughs> no. So he said, "Well, you've got to go to Baghdad, or you're leaving the company." So I left the company, and I was unemployed. So I decided to set up a company of my own, and I stole many of the employees <laughs> from my previous company. They all said, "We we want to come and work for you, not stay with the other guy." Yeah, and. A sort of as a reward for providing a job to one of the guys, he said, oh, what will really keep you here is if you meet a woman. I'll set you up on some dates. <laughs> so he set me up on a bunch of dates with various women, and then eventually wow. one of those women was my wife, and I was really impressed with her, and it just went from there. I see. And at that, that time, you still couldn't speak pra- uh, Czech. Czech, right? No, not at all. No, no. Um, I've been here now officially for eight years, actually. Okay. And for the first two years, I didn't learn anything at all. Yeah. And then for about a year, I messed around with it a bit, <laughs> yeah, like half-heartedly. Me. Where I'm at right now. Yes, go on. With, are you learning Czech? No, German, German. Oh, German. Yes, okay. Yes. No, I don't. Two years, I, first I, two years, I'm resisting it. Ah, I don't want yeah, to. Yes. And I'm just now, I'm just messing around a little bit. Yeah. So, and, and then about five and a half years ago, I decided, well, let's get serious with it. That's yeah. because you wanted to speak, do the speech. Exactly. Is that right? But um, exactly. then when was the first time you met your father-in-law? Ah, uh, no. Okay. <laughs> that, that story that you told me, that was really cool. Okay. So I actually met my father-in-law a few months before the wedding. They don't live in Prague. They live quite far away. Okay. Um, and yes. So I had a, I, I, my, my check then because... I was half-hearted with it, not very good, to be honest. Ah, ah, I it wasn't see. very good. Got it. But I had a conversation. I hope this is the same conversation you yes. mean. But I had a conversation with him. He he lived in the countryside, and we were talking away in my broken Czech, and I we heard a noise in the background on a tree. Did 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 did? Oh no, was it on a? Yes, it was on a tree. Did 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 And it was a woodpecker. A bird, and I started talking about woodpeckers, and he went, "Oh, how do you know that word?" Like, well, I'm learning the language, aren't I? And he was very impressed. It was a very nice conversation to have, just because he was sort of surprised that I knew this random word, and he sort of switched then to liking me for me being this weird stranger oh. <laughs> to me being this um, guy he could sort of relate to. It was like an instant connection with the guy, and then he very quickly decided that I was the right man for his. <laughs> And I, so I think I actually, I actually think that I, I did get parental approval by knowing the word for woodpecker. In wow, Czech. that's pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So then, it's, then you is that when you realize that wow, you know, learning language is really um, can can give you results or right. So experience that you wouldn't have. If right. You didn't learn it. So this is this. So several things led me. So that one when you, when I just said woodpecker and I realized. Well, they're connected to the guy there, and it made this him like me all of a sudden, and now I can marry his daughter. Ooh, that's a big deal, hey? Big deal from knowing the word woodpecker, yeah. And, <laughs> and it really Everybody taught... run out, how do you say woodpecker? woodpecker? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But it, it, it was one of several moments when I realized yeah, yeah. that what really excites me, yeah, tell me is making changes, is making things happen through the language, not just having casual conversations with people, with strangers, but actually being able to make things happen that would not have happened without that conversation. So at the moment, I'm, I'm pretty heavily learning German, oh. quite deeply immersed in German. And, uh, and because there will be the conference next year in Berlin, Yes, I hope. Yes. And um, I'm hoping to get my German up to a reasonable level so that I can then have these same kind of moments in in Berlin. Berlin. Got it. Okay, so great. Now, why don't you share So what is your routine? Give me a, like like a like a time like, you know, like you wake up in the morning, what what what, what do you do? Like in so terms the of first learning. Thing, the first thing I must say is my situation is a bit different, I think, because I don't work. I'm retired. Okay. So the whole day is free to me. 
Yeah. And so my routine probably is not a very practical routine for most people. Got it. You know, I understand that if you've got children and a job and cool. other responsibilities, it's very difficult to find any time to study. So really, every day for me is sort of like a weekend where you've got the luxury of not having stress and not so, ha not being tired. I understand. So why don't why don't you just share your routine so just just we can get a sense of like how you like immerse yourself in the language and then you can give recommendations for those people who has to work or have children to learn a language. How's that? Sure, sure. So um I try at any time to have one main language that I'm focused on. Okay, one language. One language. At the moment it's German. Yeah. And I spend most of my time each day on German. About probably I'm probably doing about two hours of German a day. Okay. At the moment. And but I'm also working on several other languages. So I'm still working on Czech. Ah. I'm still working on Mandarin. I'm still doing some French and I'm doing some Vietnamese. And tiny bit of Italian, but not very seriously. So really I try to get German done in the mornings. Give me a time, like from this time to this time, an hour. I want really want to know the the really specific. Okay, so I try to have all my German finished by ten o'clock, but you also have to realize I get up at four thirty in the morning. I get up really early. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So what time do you start? Like, so just you just try to get it before ten o'clock whenever you feel like it. Is that what you mean? Exactly. Exactly. Because and you, there are two. Would you do two hours straight, or would you do no, an not hour? At all. No, well, so in the, I, I do several things in the morning. So I, I'm, I play my guitar for at least an hour in the mornings. I go for a half hour run in the mornings as well. Yeah. And, and I make breakfast for me and my wife and all these things. So fitting, oh. I have to fit in, yeah. So, so I have to fit in my two hours. And I try not to do more than 15 to 20 minutes at a time. I find my maximum concentration span is 25 minutes. Got it. Even better is 15 minutes. Okay. So, so anything between fifteen to twenty-five minutes of concentration, of effort on a language. After that, my mind wanders away. Got it, it really does. Um, that's if I'm doing studying. Yeah. If I'm doing, yeah. So, this two hours I'm talking about is studying time. God, this is the learning time. The learning not time. Not the playing time. No. Got so it. I've got things like um, on. I've got textbooks. I've got. Do you know Link, Steve, um, Steve Kaufman's Link system? Yes. I, I use that as well for German and for French and for Czech and so on. And um, I, I listen intently to radio broadcasts and various audio things. I try to get a, a mix of stuff, basically. Got it. But, but I want to make it quite intensive study in the mornings. Got it. So then in, later in the day, it's play. Got so I'll wa I watch, say, episodes of uh, the Smurfs. Do you know the Smurfs? Yes, I know the Smurfs. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I w currently I'm watching the Smurfs in German. And I'm watching, I'm actually watching the Smurfs in German and in French. Oh, yeah. Yeah. On YouTube? Uh, I what? downloaded them all from some not quite so legal websites, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> I've no idea. I don't know where I would get them legally here in yeah. France. So I just downloaded them yeah. from the internet. And uh, so in, what I tend to do then is focus study in the mornings in 15 to 25 minute batches until I've done a couple of hours throughout the morning. And I try to do that before 10 o'clock. Got it. But of course, I've been awake for five and a half hours by then. So I can spread out those two hours quite easily. Yeah. Yeah. And then later, I'll um, come on to my other languages and just do again 15 to 20 minutes of each. But after that two hours of intensive stuff in the morning, I start to allow myself more freedom. I have structure early on, and then I'm less structured later on. Got it. And what I tend to do is focus on um, authentic materials. So watching videos, uh, reading magazines or newspapers, and also output. I, I do all of my output in the afternoons. What do you mean Very often. Very often. Uh, Mostly speaking. With like a language partner or by yourself? Maybe? Okay, both of those things. So um, I do a lot of um, self-talk, talking to myself. I also do a lot of, um, try to do simultaneous interpreting. 
So I'll have a, a recording in a foreign language. I'll listen to it and I'll try to say it. Sorry, I'll have it in English, say, and I'll try to say it in a foreign language. Or I'll have it in a foreign language and try to say it in English, I both see. way around. Uh, and I do that quite a lot. Um, I go on a two-hour walk every day, at least. So some days, four hours in yeah. the afternoons to get away from the computer as well. Yeah. And I usually have some audio with me, and I'll try as best I can to do this interpreting of what's in the recording. I also I, I do self-talk a little bit where you describe everything around you. Yeah. But I've found that that only works to, for me at a quite a basic level with the language yeah. because my brain gets very lazy. And what I've found tends to happen is you end up focusing a lot on nouns. So ah. you say things like I can see a tree, there is a bus, now I'm yeah. walking along the street. Yeah. And you don't actually stretch yourself. Whereas having, and that's okay at the beginner stage, yeah. but when I listen to, say, news broadcasts, um, and I, li I, you, you're forced to use the whole of the language. Totally. See what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, then, so then once I'm back from my walks, most of my later stuff in the day now tends to be um, reading. So I've got loads of novels in various languages, you know, like I'm reading Harry Potter in French at the moment, and I'm reading Charlie and the Chocolate Factory in Czech, all sorts of things. So wow. I'm just so yeah, that's pretty much the way it goes. So awesome. it's not it's, it's only very structured for the first two hours in terms of um, focused learning. Yeah. Then it moves more and more towards playing as the day goes on. Wow, and the motivation to drive you to do that is because of what we talked about earlier. And I find play more enjoyable than learning. So I get the hard stuff out of the way in the morning and my uh -huh. reward, sort of, is watching the Smurfs uh -huh. or, or reading <laughs> Harry Potter. I don't really, you know, and I, this is the other thing that I, when I was first learning languages, yeah. I used to beat myself up all the time for being stupid because I would forget everything I would make very slow progress. I would see videos of people who seemed to be amazing and think, why are they so smart and I'm so dumb? Yeah. But now, over the years, I've learned, yes, I might be dumb and I might forget everything, but at the end of the day, I do learn these languages and I can function in these languages, so it is working. Uh. Just be patient and you get there. So I've learned not to beat myself up, to ex expect that I'm going to forget stuff, to expect I'm going to make mistakes and to expect I'm going to get frustrated at the slow progress. But then you find, a couple of years down the line, hey, I can function quite well now in this language. That's okay. So, you get there yeah. if you just keep it up. And, and I think this is in. probably, personally, I, I don't know if you can describe it as a lesson or a tip for somebody, because I think you actually have to feel it yourself. Yeah. This feeling of, it doesn't matter that you think, I'm not making progress, that you think, oh, aren't I so stupid, or so on. Because those are just tricks your brain's playing on you, and you are learning the language even when you don't realize it. It's sinking in. So allowing the sinking in process and expecting that I'm going to be constantly disappointed with myself, I realize that's just part of the process. Got it. You know, totally. like when, when I'm running, I do a lot of running now, and the next day, my legs ache. Yes. Rather than a heavy run. And so you, I now associate the aching and the pain with the running. And I've, I guess I've sort of associated the self-doubt and the worries and the frustrations as like the aching pains from language learning. You know what I mean? So when you feel that, you know you're learning. You're progressing. Well, I know I've tried. <laughs> you try. You, you, because you actually use your, use your head, your brain to actually learn some. And, you know, um, I probably really only have have one language tip, uh, one, one language learning tip. Yes. And it's, the, I, people say, what's the secret to learning languages? Now, I'm no expert. I'm a polynot, as I say in that video. I just think I'm, I can't say that I'm some great guru who can give great advice. I think I'm just pretty average. Yeah. But I think I've accomplished more than average yes. by persistence. Persistence. And, persistence and this is it I, I can I, I probably can't tell people the best way to learn a language but I can tell them the best way to not learn a language and that is giving up yeah and 
if you stick with it and you do put the hours in and you vary it and you listen to audio and you read books and even if you don't think it's going in, it is slowly, slowly, slowly and one day you get there. So giving up is the only thing I think that is going to stop people from eventually getting there. Other than that, I think people need to be realistic about their expectations. I know it sounds great when you see somebody who's only been learning a language for two weeks and they have a video where they're talking to a native speaker and you think, my God, that guy's amazing. Why aren't I like that? Well, because you're not. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad. <laughs> yeah. So, in a way, as much as I am impressed by those videos, I used to get discouraged by them because, that, my God, I'm never that good. Yeah. I can't speak at all in the first two weeks. It takes yeah. me a few months. Um, so, now I try to think I can be impressed by these people but I don't have to feel intimidated by yeah. them it's just like watching Usain Bolt running the 100 meters yeah. it doesn't make me think god I'm a useless runner I am compared to him <laughs> but I can still be a very good runner and the same with languages I think now I've gone from being a language dunce to being probably better than average at language learning just by persistence and slowly plugging away at it so Plug away at it every day Plug a little. Away. Don't and don't give up, and slowly it will come. Got it. Wow, that, that's, that's that's great. So if you so what if you just you have you only have like an hour a day. What would you what would how can I maximize that hour? Yeah, you know the most imp as I said the most important thing is not giving up. So I would say do whatever it takes to, in this hour for you to want to do another hour tomorrow. Ah, do whatever it takes an hour today so that you do. You, you will want to do another hour do tomorrow. Do an hour tomorrow. Ah. Just keep it going. So it's very tempting to say, I've only got an hour, so I'm going to study the grammar books really hard until my brain hurts. But then you will associate language learning with pain. Yes. And you all want to be heroes. That if it doesn't hurt, I've not worked hard enough. But in my experience, whenever I've done that, I don't want to pick that grammar book up again because yeah. it's too painful so really the you're not going to get a lot done in one hour yeah but you'll get a lot done in 365 hours nice so the most important thing i think is what is in your language learning today do whatever it takes for you to want to do one more hour of language learning tomorrow wow that's profound <laughs> <laughs> Because I, well, I, that's, I think it's realistic. No, totally. That, that's really the key. I mean, if you don't, like for me, I associate uh, grammar book with uh, sleeping. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I pick it up and fall asleep. So <laughs> there's no more grammar book for sure. That's very, very true. Yeah. yeah. So I, in fact, I don't, a lot of people think if they haven't worked hard, they've wasted the hour. Mm. I feel that if you've done something you didn't enjoy so you never do it again, that's wasted the hour. Mm. So even if you're just watching the Smurfs or, re or reading Harry Potter or even if it's just a, a, something really basic in the language, if at the end of it you think, oh, that was really good, I really enjoyed it. Mm. That's, uh, and even if you don't think you've learned anything... You probably have. It will have sunk in. Yeah. Because everything in language learning is about repetition and things slowly sinking in. You know, um, this is one of the big problems that people have when, when they think language learning is like learning history off other facts. They think, I know all the vocabulary now because I've read the lists and I can remember the words. But when they come to have a conversation, they can't say them because they're struggling to remember the words. Yeah. And that's because language learning isn't about it is partly about partly, yes. learning facts, but mostly it's about getting things deeper and deeper and deeper inside you from continual exposure yeah. to things that you already know. In, you know, I'm currently taking a cookery course. Okay. Yeah, a gastron science of gastronomy and cookery. And one of the things one of the instructors said in that course is you should keep studying something and keep practicing something until... It's so automatic, you're yawning at learning the stuff again because it's so basic, it's beneath you. I see. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and he said, By, if, if you can do the stuff in your sleep, 
you know, kneading bread and so on is something we've been learning recently, how to make bread. And he said, if you can pretty much do it in your sleep or without even thinking, then you know it. If you've got to rack your brain and try to remember what was in the textbook, then you've only got a very superficial idea. And I find the same is true with languages. I might know all the vocabulary, I might know the grammar stuff, but when I hit a real conversation, the words aren't flowing. Mm -hmm because I only know it at sort of an intellectual level. Yeah. And it's when it sinks down inside you through repeated exposure over and over and over again that the words just come flowing out. I've, I've said this in some of my videos, actually. Yeah. People talk about, when will I be able to think in the foreign language? And I think that's a, not a very good question, because as I'm speaking to you now in English, I'm not thinking in English. The words are just coming out. Yeah. You're not you know thinking, what I mean? You just talk. It's just talking. Yeah. And so what you want to reach is not to be thinking in yeah. German or Spanish or anything. Now, now in my German, I can speak basic German, I suppose, but I have to think a little bit as I'm doing it. Yeah. Whereas in French, I don't know. It just comes out. Yeah. And, and the same with Czech and so on. But So it's when you're not thinking in the language that you, the words are just coming out that I think you've actually achieved a great conversational ability. I see. And, and that comes like with the bread making, I think, when you have gone from the intellectual knowledge to it's sort of deep inside you and it's completely automatic, you could do it in your sleep. And that doesn't come from spending one hour of serious effort, it comes from 365 hours over a year of letting it all sink in. I see. And, and, and so when you said, okay, how can I so I'm just exploring what you said about how sure. can I how can I um, use that hour so that I want to do it again yeah. tomorrow, right? So for me, what I think would work for me is maybe half an hour of learning and half an hour playing. It sounds great. In fact, this is another thing that I said. I said I've got a really bad power of concentration. I think because with learning, I can only manage fifteen to twenty-five minutes. So yeah. probably what I, what I would do personally it's yeah. probably two 15 minute sessions of learning with okay. a break between them yeah and then play and play and play and play yeah ah. but again that's what works for me totally i mean i can see that i mean we can try different things and see what works but totally 15 minutes 15 to 20 minutes of like concentrate not distracted like you know like focused learning is that what you're talking about right 15 minutes of focused learning yeah twice a day twice in in the day to make up a half hour and then a half hour of making it fun making for it yourself fun. So you're by watching the Smurfs, and you'll think, "Oh, this is fun!" You know. So your last memory of the language isn't my. I've got a headache. Yeah, <laughs> it's actually oh, you know. I bought actually when I was learning Czech, I bought a very, two very fat joke books. Yeah. So that, and I have these at my bedside table, and sometimes I'll just open these up and read the page of jokes and giggle a little bit about them. And it leaves me with a happy feeling of the language as I'm falling to sleep. Yeah. And so this is an example of play again. Make your closing time with the language pleasant so that you'll want to do it again. Wow. Yeah. I think that that's it. I mean, this is, thank you so much. This is such a great conversation. I learned a lot. Oh, oh, well, I'm very impressed if you did, because I don't think I've, I don't think anything I've said is pretty outstanding. It's just pretty simple stuff, I think. But the, these are just the lessons I've learned through my own struggles. Again, in my video um, at the conference, I was talking about polynots. Yeah. It's, and I know we, we all get very excited about polyglots and their great accomplishment. But the majority of people in, are people who are struggling with language learning, yes. I think, honestly. Yes. And my real focus is on why are people struggling on la with language learning and what can be done to help them. Yeah. So it's, I'm not really addressing stuff for people who can already speak 10 languages. Of course. I'm much more interested in people who are just starting out maybe in their first or second language and struggling with them. Me too. Yeah, okay. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Because that's totally the good. vast majority of people, I think. And I think that those are the people that probably I can help. Yeah, so bit. that's actually this is what, what this video is for, not for... <laughs> Um, um, people who can speak like 10 languages I mean it gets easier and easier as you go if you know as you said right. in the video you just add one at one and <laughs> that's right and, and that's really and from all the interviews that I've, I've, I've done with people usually once they add one and then they get addicted and they want to add one and one and one and one and one so right. all we need to do is help people to add one yes 
And that's really what my focus is too. And that's what I'm sure this video will help people to have add one language. I hope so. I hope it helps some people anyway. Okay. Well, thank so, you so much for your time. Thank you, Brian. Okay. You See you then. Bye. Bye, -bye. Bye. If you want to find out more about Anthony, here's his channel. And if you want more of these interviews with different polygons, learn from these master of language learning, subscribe to this channel. And I also want to know um, what you learned in, the, in this video and also how you're going to implement in your life. So leave a comment, let me know. Lastly, Genius Plus is about to launch in a few weeks. It's a memorization app that I've been working for the past year, basically taking all these things I learned from polyglots, my language learning experiment, living in a foreign country, all inside the app to help you to learn to speak the language as fast as possible. So stay tuned, it's going to be awesome, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.